my watch out, welcome back. Okay, now I expected the paint to turn up today, but it didn't, uh, ain't it always the way? But what did turn up was the new shocks. So, I'm gonna bung the shocks on today. I've got to bung the dump valve back on, talk to you a little bit about that as well, and at least we can get those jobs knocked off uh, before the paint arrives. YSS 4G, they're the G series shock, same as we've got on Penny's Triumph, but they're the 4G, the top of the step for this bike. I wanted to spoil it a bit, it's kind of worth it. So I thought I'd invest in these. They really are amazing. The Olins ones, I just want to make this point. Of course, Olins are an amazing brand. We all know Olins, they're like the Rolex of suspension. However, these are their entry level, my first Olins type stack. You know, there's no damping adjustment on them whatsoever. They are a fixed package. What you get is what you're given. They have a little tiny step ring there. Can you see that, Ben? Mm -hmm. They have a little tiny step ring of adjustment, which is what you get on a standard set of shocks on any bike. And that's it, nothing else. And they're a bit tired. And to be honest, they weren't giving me what I wanted, which was the ability to stiffen up the rear suspension a great deal. This thing, when you launch it, it tends to squat on the back end on the power, and that makes it squirm a little when it's going fast down the road. I'm not sure about that. I want something I can stiffen up a little bit more, and these are amazing. You've got infinite adjustment there. I've got 70 mil of adjustable screw thread for this collar. You just screw that down, that's the preload on the spring. I've got compression damping in the foot. I've got compression and rebound damping adjustment just on clicks on a collar. Just like you'd get on a pair of thousand pound Olins, but these are half the price. So they're well worth the money if that's what you want. If you want multi-adjustable shocks that you're really going to dial in and tune into what you want. And also, again, if I'm going to take Penny on the back and some luggage or whatever, then I can wind up preload on it and I can make them just a nice comfortable road shock. If I'm out playing silly beggars, then I can make them set up for that too. And all on a few clicks. There's a little dial on the back there with a screwdriver. That's your compression damping. The collar at the bottom is the rebound damping, and it's multi-adjustable. So you can set it up and dial it in exactly how you like. We've done this. I know I can trust these because I put them on Penny's Triumph, and she's quite fussy on suspension. She wants the bike to be just so, and we managed after a few rides to set them up absolutely right. You can dial them in. You just take out the adjusters with you, which is this pin and this little screw Allen key. On the inside of the collar, it's got a little lock screw. You release it, pop that in there, 
and then you can turn that screw round as you need to to set the preload and then a little screwdriver just do the damping ever so easy to live with and I think well worth the money so they're a nice investment bungalows on for now now the last little job I've got to do is put the dump valve back on but I want to show you what it is what was wrong with it and what it actually does in case you don't know might be of interest I'll show you what I mean Right, okay, in amongst all the little jobs on this, I've got loads and loads of little tasks to perform. One of the reasons I haven't taken this out and given it a good pasting or video yet is because I'm not ready to do so. This bike's been sat for probably nine months in the guy's garage, it hadn't gone anywhere, he told me that, and I want to make sure that everything's still working okay and that there's nothing going to catch me out if I go out there and give it a pasting and then find something's break or something's seized or something's stuck and I end up with a bigger problem that's more expensive. It's just a safety thing, you know. And one of them that's really important is the safety of the boost system. A turbocharger is pretty pretty feisty. It's, it's got enough power quite easily to literally destroy your engine if the wastegate or the blow off valve sees up. They are the two the fail safes on a turbo. The wastegate valve down the bottom, that vents excess pressure. It's not set on a certain PSI, this one's set on five PSI. When it reaches five pounds of boost, any more boost after that just vents out through a wastegate to atmosphere, just gone. So it's not boosting any higher than that. You also get inlet pressure as well. The airbox on a turbo bike is usually referred to as a plenum chamber because it's made out of metal. It has to be extremely tough and hard because you get enormous pressure inside a turbo airbox. So much so that if it was made of plastic, you just burst it straight away or it would blow the rubbers off it. So you have to have a made of metal. And the one that was created for this was designed to have on the back of it one of these, which is a, dirt, uh, a dump valve or a blow off valve. And all it does is a spring loaded piston that opens a valve. And it's got like a little mushroom inside there. And as soon as sufficient pressure builds up on the back of it, it pushes the piston open and it vents the pressure. Now you'll hear these things working. When the guys who buy Subarus and so on, any of you guys with turbocharged cars you hear drive past, you get that noise as the car drives by. That's when they change gear because quite simply what they're doing is shut the throttle, all the pressure coming in through the engine, all that boost going through the engine. When you shut the throttle, it's like shutting the gate. It's like you've got a load of air rushing through something and you suddenly shut the gate on it. Well, all the pressure's then going to build up all of a sudden. Instant maximum pressure inside that plenum. It's got to go somewhere. And if it's not allowed to vent, then it goes back down the inlet tube and it slows the turbo down. It can even stop it almost and that can also damage it. So you have to have a safety valve on the air inlet side and that's what it is. It's one of them. So that's all I had to do. I had to take that apart and grease it up, put it back on working nicely now. This is an original Turbo Dynamics one, a good quality item. All of the stuff on this bike, I said at the beginning, is a really good quality kit. So all of this was built out of excellent quality parts. And the proof of that is that if this had been a Chinese dump valve and it was, what, 17 years old, it would have just been trashed by now and get another one. As it is, all I did was take it apart, clean it, put it back together. And that's a good reason to invest in quality parts if you're building a system like this. Anyway, I'm going to bung it back on and there's another little job knocked off of this. Job blocked off now. Chain sprockets, plug leads, air filter, clutch hose, paintwork, loads still to do. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs>